physics. Hey everybody, welcome to Noah's AP Review. Together we're going to get ready for the AP Physics B exam. So, without further ado, let's get started. Lesson 1, Kinematics in One Dimension. Alright, so let's get started with some terms. Mechanics. Now, uh, when you think mechanics, you probably think of uh, machines, moving parts, pistons and pulleys and gears and all that good stuff. And you're not actually that far off, because mechanics just means the study of objects in motion. And those machines with all those moving parts had to be designed by a mechanical engineer who studies mechanics. Mechanics will take up about 35% of the AP exam, so pay attention. Mechanics can be split into two categories. First, now, kinematics is the analysis of how objects move. So, say I go like this. With kinematics, I say, okay, it had initial downward velocity and downward acceleration, and then it hit the floor, and then when it came back up, it had upward velocity, still downward acceleration, etc, etc. I'm describing how it's moving. The other category, dynamics. Now, dynamics is all about why objects move the way they do. Watch this. With dynamics, I say, I applied an initial downward force on the ball. Gravity also applied another downward force. And then it hit the ground. And when it hit the ground, the ground exerted an equal and opposite reaction that pushed it back up. And then acceleration due to gravity, kept on bringing it back down, etc, etc. So kinematics is what is happening, dynamics is why it's happening. Dynamics is a lot to do with forces and vectors, and we'll get into that later. As you can see, this lesson is all about kinematics. Now let's start learning the real stuff. Say you're uh, jogging around the track, and it's a quarter mile track, and you do four laps, so you cover a total distance of one mile. But at the end of it, you go, you get to the finish line, but that's just back at the starting line. You're exactly where you were before. So your distance that you covered was a mile, but your displacement was zero. So displacement is your change in position. So you may have covered a total of one mile, but your position is exactly where it was before, so you haven't changed your position at all, thus your displacement is zero. In physics, when we're talking about position, we like to use a, an xy coordinate plane. Since we're using one dimension, we'll just use x. So, you will work with x coordinates. So, check this out. Say that you go five steps forward, one, two, three, four, five, and then you take two steps back. One, two. The total distance you've covered, five, and then two, seven. Your total distance is seven, but your displacement is one, two, three, four, five, four, three. It, took, it subtracted when you went back. So you've got three is your total displacement. For this reason, we often describe displacement as your change in x, your change in your x-coordinate. If you're moving up and down, it'll be change in y, and that's written as this. This little triangle is a Greek letter, delta, and delta just means change in. So delta x, change in x, and that is equal to final position minus initial position. When you see it without a little subscript, that means it's final, and the little o usually means initial. Say I've got five hamburgers, right? And I want to eat some and then figure out how much I have left and what my change in number of hamburgers was. So, delta hamburgers. So I got five, and then a, uh, I eat a couple, and then a friend eats one, so then I've got two left at the end. So final is two, minus initial, which was five, equals negative three. My change in number of hamburgers was minus three. Now say I uh, start out with five, 
and then I eat those couple, and then a friend of mine has one, but then I slap two more on the grill. And then, so I end up with four at the end. Final minus initial equals negative one. I only lost one burger. I may have consumed more than one, but ultimately my change in burgers was negative one. Point being, delta anything means final minus initial. Displacement is delta position, in this case, x, delta x, your change in x coordinates. Say I uh, start out at little 2 right here, and then I go over here a bit, boom, 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 then I come back a little bit, ooh, let's go on an adventure over here, oh, what's up here, it's fun stuff going on, adventure, woo, flying around, and then ultimately I go for hours and hours and hours, and I stop right here. That's negative one. Two, negative one. Final minus initial equals negative three. That's my change of position. You get the point. The only other thing that you have to keep in mind is that displacement is what we call a vector. That means that it is a value that has direction. So distance just means ground covers. So that can be in any direction. That doesn't have a direction. That is called a scalar. It's just a digit. But displacement you would say negative 3, the negative is our direction. Since we're using one dimension, negative means that way, positive means that way. But say, say I were hiking, and I went in all these different directions, I did some double backs and all this stuff, and then ultimately I want to find out what my displacement is, I would have to express that with direction. For example, I might say my displacement was 10 kilometers northwest. Vectors have directions, scalars do not, and we'll get much more into those later. Don't worry about that too much for now. Now let's talk about speed, and I'm not talking about breaking bad here. Speed as in, you know, what you see on your speedometer, how fast you're going. Now your speedometer will give your speed in miles per hour or kilometers per hour, depending on where you are. Um, but think about that, miles per hour. Say you're going 65 miles per hour. 65 miles per hour. So what that's telling us is that in one hour, you're traveling 65 miles. Makes sense, right? And that right there is telling us what the equation for speed is. Miles, that's measuring distance. Hours, that's measuring time. So your average speed is equal to your distance over time. If I walk 5 meters in 3 seconds, then that's my speed is 5 meters over 3 seconds, 5 thirds meter per second. And that's my unit for speed, is meters per second. You might be thinking, why are we going back to distance here? Didn't we just go over displacement? And I like the way you think. The physics version of distance is displacement. The physics version of speed is velocity. Now we don't just use velocity because it sounds cooler. No, we use velocity because it is just like speed, but it has direction. So while speed is a scalar, just a value, velocity is a vector. It's a value with a direction. And the way that we find velocity is very similar to finding speed. So speed is distance over time. Velocity is displacement over time. Say I walk four meters forward and two meters back, and it takes me two seconds. So my total distance that I've traveled, four plus two, six meters in two seconds. So my speed is six divided by two. So that's three meters per second. My velocity, however, will be different because displacement and distance are not the same. So if I go four meters forward and two meters back, my displacement is 4 minus 2, 2 meters. So 2 over 2, not 6 over 2. So my speed may be 3 meters per second, because I, I perceived 3 meters per second. I felt like I was moving at 3 meters per second. But my velocity is 1 meter per second, because in that time span, I only moved 1 meter for every second. There you go. So I've put a, few, a couple of our equations up here. We got displacement, final minus initial, and velocity, delta x displacement over delta t, time. Now one thing you should keep in mind 
is that the delta t is often written as just t. You know that delta t means final time minus initial time, but in a lot of cases, our initial time will be zero. So final minus zero is gonna be the same as final, so it'll just be t. Don't worry about it for now. Whatever works better for you, you can write it as delta t, you can write it as just t. Works for me. We'll get more into that later. Okay, let's do a problem. Say uh, I'm late for class and the door, the classroom door, is 105 meters from me. 105 meters. That's our displacement. I need to get myself from here to there. Um, but the, I only have 30 seconds until the bell rings. The only time I have is 30 seconds. What must my average velocity be if I am to get to class in time? V equals delta x over delta t. V equals delta x over delta t, or just t. And that equals 3.5 meters per second. Some of you may have noticed that there's a weird little horizontal line above my V here and here. What does that mean? That means average, average velocity. A lot of the time when you read that, you'll say V bar. Um, and what that's telling us is that my average velocity for me to get there in time has to be 3.5 meters per second, but I don't have to constantly be moving at 3.5 meters per second. I could sprint at 6 meters per second and then earn myself a little extra time and then slow down to a jog as I get closer, as long as my average is 3.5. Think about this. I want to drive 300 kilometers and I've got 3 hours. So, and my average velocity, 300 kilometers divided by 3 hours, 100 kilometers per hour but I'm not gonna be moving at 100 kilometers per hour the entire time. I'm not, I'm not gonna sit in my driveway and then just boom and move and then not stop until I get there. No, see, I gotta build up my speed and then I gotta stop for stop signs, then I gotta go again, then I gotta speed up to pass some guy. So it's important not to confuse average velocity with instantaneous velocity, which means your velocity at any given moment. The equation for instantaneous velocity is as follows. You wanna find the limit of delta x over delta t as delta t approaches zero. That is when delta t is getting infinitesimally small so that it's just a tiny little narrow window. So you know within that brief window what your velocity was. Essentially, you're still taking the average but over a very, very small period of time. Luckily for us, we don't care because we almost never use this in physics B. That we, you can wait till physics C for that stuff. So forget about it. If you want to find your instantaneous velocity, the exact velocity you're going at any given moment, just look for any brief window of time when velocity is constant, because that means that it won't be changing and your average will be the same as your instantaneous. And when you're looking for constant velocity, you're essentially looking for a time when acceleration is zero. Acceleration is, as you may have inferred, a change in velocity. If you're increasing velocity, you're, you have positive acceleration. If you're decreasing velocity, you have negative acceleration or deceleration. But uh, don't get that confused because you can have negative acceleration that will then increase your velocity in the opposite direction. So don't get hung up on the word deceleration. Think of just acceleration for now. And acceleration is given as change in velocity over change in time. So say I'm starting from rest. My initial velocity is zero. And then I speed up to 30 meters per second. And let's say it takes me six seconds to do that. What's my acceleration? Acceleration is delta V over delta T. Delta V was just 30 because it's final minus initial and initial is zero, so. And delta T took me six seconds. So 30 divided by 6 equals 5, but look at this. See, it's meters per second divided by second. So meters per second times 1 over second is meters over seconds squared. That's our unit. Meters per second squared. That is how we measure acceleration. What this is telling us is that we're increasing our velocity by 5 meters per second every second five meters per second per second. At t equals zero, velocity was zero. At t equals one, 
velocity would be 5, because it's increased by 5 in that second. One second later, t equals 2. Velocity has increased by another 5, so it's 10. And so on and so forth. Now say I start at rest. And I accelerate at 11 meters per second squared. And say I'm accelerating for 8 seconds. Now, delta v is final minus initial. We don't know final yet, but we know that initial is zero. So that means that delta v, in this case, is just v final. And we want to solve for v. Do a little algebra. And now plug in your a and your t. And you get, which is very fast. So there you go. Uh, that was just a little teaser as to how we're going to solve equations with uh, given variables. And uh, next video, we're going to get super into that. So uh, thank you for watching. See you next time.